we're going to be learning about modern ships and boats. <laughs> Can you name a modern ship or a boat? Uh, a modern ship? Like a tanker. Well done. Well done, Jason. That's a golden star for you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're <laughs> on cargo ships, sir. Uh, and welcome to Dadcast. Oh, we're the man, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I found a, a, a book on, on the table um, talking about the great big book of knowledge. And it kind of tied in with the subject that we were talking today, but we were talking about the importance of education and our views on education. So that's not just limited to, um, you know, how you went about going to school, mm -hmm. but how important is it for you, for your child to be accessing certain things. Mm -hmm. So when you look at other countries, like other European countries will have a lot more focus on small children spending like the first five, six, seven, eight years on play yeah. and the social Learning side. Play. Yeah. Whereas we in the UK are quite regimented traditionally mm -hmm. um, and it is a lot of, you know, it's important for our child to write their name, it's important for our child to be getting their pen licence by the time they get to the end of primary and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah. wanted to cover, yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. What are your boys kind of, are you, how high do you hold your children's how, how high of regard do you hold for your children's education? Um, I, I hold it high in terms of in, in different stages. So in, uh, they're in primary school at the moment and I, I, I hold that as the highest regard at the moment for them because I feel like because they're young, the knowledge that's imparted in them at the moment in terms of the things that they're learning is so, so important, you know, to help build them. When you get to, uh, uh, you know, um, that other higher level which is like you know university i suppose that's more of a kind of option based thing depending on what it is that they want to do but in regards to where they're at now like it's really really important i find it really really important that they learn as much as they can um, with, with that with that and going off what you said mm -hmm. when it comes to them doing their sats yeah because uh, my kids have gone through that already or most of them have what, how do you feel you will handle that? Is that to you how you mark their success in education or is it about them just going every day and enjoying learning? Or will you, because my kids all felt pressure when yeah. it came to SATs no. and I wondered what your thoughts were on that. Is it going to be the kind of thing where you hold it in such high regard that they have to do well at their SATs or? No, 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 no. So my thing on exams, we have already spoken about this, you know, me and Sherelle, and my thing on exams is not to try and put too much pressure on that because, you know, when it comes to things like, you know, obviously GCSEs and things like that. It, it's you, you're not bounded by the success of your GCSEs. You can there's loads of things that you can kind of do after that. Um, what I want them to do is to enjoy their learning um, yeah, okay. and be able to, and for me to be able to enjoy learning with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the most important thing. The stats are just part of the thing to, to understand what I suppose what level they're at. You know, going into going into secondary school. Yeah. But for me, I just want to I want them to enjoy learning. They're not going to enjoy everything. I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. But I just want them to enjoy something like say yeah, like he enjoys maths yeah yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. so you want to cultivate that and exactly. encourage that so it's more about cultivating and encouraging rather than like you have to do well than, than yeah. Like, yeah no 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 okay, no, no, no. Jace, what are your thoughts on primary kind so of education where your kids are? i think one of the things for me is i want my girls to do well as all parents do but what i want is for them to have tried their best if they've tried their best then I, I am happy um, and I think they're going to find it difficult when they come up short sometimes mm -hmm. um, and that's that's you know that's a part of the course that's something that you do is you cannot teach a child to fail until they fail at something but yeah. they can't really learn how that works until they've done it mm -hmm. and that's the thing I'm that's the bit I think is going to be tricky for them when they were doing their sounds both of my girls when they're doing like the year two ones they've been so worried about them mm -hmm. but there's been no pressure from her, no pressure mm -hmm. at all. It's just been a case of, look girls, like, you do whatever it is you need to do, mm -hmm. you do as well as you possibly can, and, and we're happy. We've had, like, Jada get amazing results in her maths, mm -hmm. and that was spectacular, but the thing I worry about is that because she's, like, aced the maths, next time if she doesn't ace it, how's she going to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have this time, I, I really want them to do well. Mm -hmm. um, I did okay at school. Um, I didn't get any A's at all when it got to GCSE, but I got B's and C's. Yeah. I think I got one D. So with regards to the fail side yeah. of things, mm -hmm. um, I didn't get any grades that indicated a fail, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I didn't necessarily high fly and everything. And you yeah. want your kids to kind of surpass you, mm -hmm. but again, working in education, I know that my children doing really well at primary school means that their target grades and predicted grades in secondary school are going to be so high. And that's, that's the moment when you go through so much like emotionally hormonally like yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, much yeah, that yeah. goes on there yeah. um and yeah and then there's like these really high aspirations that you want them to have 
but then there's sometimes they they worry they're not going to meet the expectation. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a bit that I worry about. I I really want my girls to yeah they're going to do primary school they're going to do secondary school that's part of the course. Um, it is up to them if they want to go on to college traditionally um, or if they want to go on and do like an apprenticeship. It's up to them if they want to go to uni. Mm-hmm. But um, I was saying the other day like I would encourage my girls to go to a uni in another city. Mm-hmm. It'd be rubbish the thought of them going and not coming back. I don't want that side. I want them to go out and experience it. I feel like they need to kind of go out and that's how they can find themselves a bit more. So it's bigger than the education is mm-hmm. about they are at that time. Um, yeah, and I, I think for me, my view is shaped on my education. So because I missed three years of secondary school uh, and I didn't sit a single exam, I don't have any GCSEs, I didn't sit mm-hmm. a single exam, I've always noticed the difference and I know that it's very much, GCSEs don't define who you are and stuff, but when you don't have them, it definitely does impact on opportunities and things like that, even in regards to, if I wanted to go to university, I would have to do an access course and then a, a university course. So even as a mature student, the fact that I didn't get GCSEs back then that allowed me to go on to some kind of academic course post-16 mm-hmm. has held me up in regards to that kind of thing. Um, not to say that's what I necessarily would have done at the time, I can't say, but I think I feel like I want my children to achieve, um, I don't want to put pressure on them, and when it came to their year six SATs, three of them have done then, there was no pressure from home, it was exactly that, do the best that you can, as long as you can tell me that you went and you tried your hardest, mm. then I'm happy, don't worry about what the school's saying, don't worry about what secondary you know, is saying, just try your best, you know, and I'll mm. help you to try your best, we'll study at home and this and that. So, but and, and when it comes to, uh, to GCSEs, it's going to be the same. I'm not going to put pressure on them, but I want them to have a good work ethic and I want them to try their best because it is hard. But it's an uphill struggle if you don't have GCSEs. Mm-hmm. Even filling in that first app- job application yeah. when you leave school. Yeah. <laughs> and my, what did you get in GCSEs? Mine was blank. And I had to write a reason in there that I will explain more in the interview. But the reason I don't have GCSEs is because I, I you know, mm. had a bad back. Yeah. I was off school with a back injury. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't, I was not right, or... Yeah, but regardless... Even so, I look at the impact that's had on my life and the course my life has taken, and it's not all bad at all, but it did leave me with less options. So for me, it's about them having the option to do what they want to do. As long as they have the option of university, whether they choose to go or not, I will back them. Uh, You know, I agree with you about that life experience, about them trying to move into a different city. I think that's really nice. If they want to, I never did, and I love my community. I love Bristol, but I've never lived anywhere else, so I think it's good for... Young, you know, your kids have that opportunity. So yeah, mine is definitely shaped, I think, by what I have put down to my lack of GCSEs. What about you, Ken? Because I was just thinking, like, with, with, with regards to your education, I know you're a person that always works hard and always wants to do well. Yeah. Um, obviously, I hope you don't mind me saying, but I know that as an adult, you went back and said you matched GCSE because that was yeah, something yeah. that kind of haunted you. Um, with regards to you wish you'd got it right the first time, but you just found it tricky. It's like, will will you? encourage your children like even more to say like, look i had to do it twice make sure you get it done the first time or will you be like it's okay if you don't get it the first time because look at me i went back and done it as an adult i think it's um it's more about like what Duffy was saying about the um you know the 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 pressure aspect but i don't want to add more pressure you know just because um I, you know i didn't do it right the first time and i went back and done the second time like i don't want to put that pressure on them i want them to you know one of my main things is the work ethic like i don't want them to give up that give up you know yeah. it's, you, you see it occasionally as they grow up but what i want them to do is just always work hard like you said make sure you try try your best you know mm-hmm. i'm a guy that likes a challenge so part of that mass thing was it yeah, yeah, challenge, it's like, challenge yeah. myself you know what i mean yeah. um and you know i know both of them probably won't have that in them that you know love a challenge i am pretty much no key they will um but I just think it's important that they just really work hard at everything that they do. Mm. That's all. That's all I really care about is just to make sure that they work hard. Because if they work hard now, you know, they they're just gonna, yeah. Exactly. And, and do you know what? I think work ethic is the one thing that really saved me in regards to career and stuff. Mm. Because my mum was always really hard working. Single parent would often work like up to sixty hours a week. Like mm. I grew up watching someone work hard to provide for her family, and she really instilled that work ethic in me. So although I didn't have the GCSEs, I think if I didn't have a work ethic, but did have GCSEs, I would have struggled as well. Oh, I think yeah. it's much better this way around, because I do have a strong work ethic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And do I you think... find though that like the times have changed a bit now, and there is this there is this pressure. It's not us putting it on our children, mm. but 
there are a lot of young people out there, hundreds of thousands of young people that have GCSEs, hundreds of thousands of young people that have these A levels, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then those that go on to university and get these degrees, mm -hmm. and then they don't end up with the experience side. Like, do you do you feel that there is that you do kind of have that responsibility as a parent to make sure you do push your children? to get their education so that they're not falling behind the peers that... Yeah, you know, you know. I think wherever I would put pressure on my kids is not in education. I think I would encourage them in education, like we said about them trying their hardest, and really try your hardest, and that means revising when you've got exams coming up, that means putting mm. them work in. But where I think I would put pressure on my kids is once they're old enough about going out and getting experience, yeah. so getting a part-time job, getting a Saturday job, volunteering somewhere. What saved my life, honestly, was the fact that Alan, my, my old youth worker, got me volunteering at 17. I had no GCSEs. I did have a catering thing at college and I was working in a restaurant, but he got me volunteering in a youth club. And that's what started my whole career as a, uh, as a youth worker. And if I hadn't have started volunteering at 17, I never would have got, got into it. Speed, I yeah. think, right? <laughs> so I think what I would have done, and what I will do is I'll put pressure on my kids to, to I want their work ethic. Yeah. You know, you, you've got, go and get yourself a job. You're in college, find yourself a Saturday job, get yeah. yourself a job, you need to, you know? And, and that's the same with me. Like my parents said the same thing. As soon as I turn 16, go and get a job. And for me, my reasons for that is because I want to instill as much independence yes. within them mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. And by them going out and, you know, doing that, it means they'll learn about the value of money, mm -hmm. you know, um, and budgeting, mm -hmm. you know, and the cost of living, mm -hmm. um, expanding their social networks beyond their, you know, their tight friends or, yeah. or, or whatever. Because when you leave school, yeah. and stuff just changes straight away anyway. Yeah. And it's just understanding, you know, understanding real life, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Especially because education, you don't always, you know, do what you do at school or uni or whatever. You don't always yeah, do want yeah. to do that thing. So, yeah. yeah. Let's, so I yeah, talking about uh, education side of things. I had a chat with somebody from uh, the works at the BBC, and they were talking about the recruitment side and how a lot of young people that want to get into TV and things like that, they study media because they want to be in the media. Mm -hmm. But they've said that actually, it's better that a young person has a specialism. Because then when they come with their specialism, you don't need to have a media degree to work in media. Yes, you have that knowledge, mm. but there are 100,000 people that have a media degree. Right. So they were saying that they'd rather get a zoologist on that, that knew about all of that stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rather than getting somebody from that had a media degree to try and do an animal show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that's, I'm, I'm glad that I now have that knowledge, because if the girl should say they want to go on to do something on TV, I'm like, okay, tough business to get into. Mm. But what area and try and, and try and break it down. But I think go on. No, I was just gonna say that was gonna be kind of like my next question to you guys, I suppose, is you know, have your children um, kind of shown interest in something that they want to do in the future and have you kind of explained to them that the, the steps it would take to kind of go there? Tasia has talked about she wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. Uh, that's something she's she's been interested in. And um, we've talked about that and her uh, auntie did a law degree, and so we talked about kind of the process there. Um, mainly she's incentivized by money, so lawyer was all about the money. Mm -hmm. um, she is interested in things like hair and beauty, so she's expressed an interest in doing hair and doing nails and stuff. But the other thing that she has said that she's quite interested in is getting involved in some kind of community or youth work because she sees what I do. I work with a lot of people her age, go to her school, she sees what I do. I do. do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And she sees the value in that. I think she, she's quite a caring person. Um, so she's kind of come up with that. Shabaya doesn't know, doesn't think about it, doesn't care at the minute. Um, Maisie is undecided. She doesn't know what she wants to do. She, mm. you know, she's just, you know, focusing on school at the minute, but she doesn't have a, a grand plan. And I think if Malachi could, he'd play computer games for a living. Good thing. Jess, Jess and Jada tend to have like multiple things. Jess uh, used to always talk about wanting to be a fashion designer. Yeah. Um, and she is quite creative, and she is always drawing things and doing that. Jada was saying that she wanted to be like, uh, I think it was she wanted to work with animals at one stage. Um, she's mentioned because Nick is a childminder, yeah. like she wouldn't mind doing something like that. Yeah. So it, yeah, Jada. That's the thing, is that where they're seven and nine, stuff's going to change um, mm -hmm. as, as time goes on. Uh, I remember I was going to be an accountant. I was going to say, what did you want to yeah, do? Yeah, I was going to be an accountant. But it, again, it was that money thing when I was in that teenage. like, I'm good with numbers. I can do accountancy. Like, obviously, back then, you just think that it's like really simple. Yeah, but yeah. for me, the, the job itself, when I got a, a two-week look into that world and what the work actually was, it wasn't for me. Yeah. And it happened to be that when I was in year 10, I'd done work experience that ended up falling, f like my original one fell through, and then I worked in a school for a week. I worked with the year sevens and mm. it was just a really good week and I got really well and got all this praise. Like, you're a natural, you're really good with that. And I've ended up working really? with young people mm. as a result. You know? well, what did you want to be when you were young? Um, I wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, At what age? Um, probably from like 10, 11 okay. maybe, yeah. 
yeah, it was, uh, no, no, it was like 10. And then I stepped into a youth club at 11 and that was it. Like, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to help. Yeah, I want to help people. Like, I want to help children. Like, that's what I want to do. Right. And yeah. literally from that age, I, all, all I cared about was that step. Mm. to get in there what do I need to do next so that's, that's why I started doing volunteering from when I was like 14 mm. 15 and you know in the youth club and stuff all playing mm. all that kind of stuff um and then my my um my uh work experience was in a youth was in yeah. a youth organization um and because I was part of these youth organizations the you know there's youth workers and stuff they knew that's what I wanted to go on and do so they started looking at different opportunities for me yeah, to, yeah. To do oh, that that thing, like Spain and things and then when the traineeship came up that was my first yeah. you for a job. That's interesting. So originally, I wanted to be a paleontologist. Ten points for anyone who can tell the viewers what that is. Yeah. Ross Geller, mate. <laughs> Ross Geller. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be a paleontologist when I was like four, five, six years old. Um, then that I didn't really have any major aspirations at you were like at the age of 10, 11. Because I missed school, I wasn't in that ecosystem where I was thinking about mm -hmm. what do I want to do. I was thinking about will I ever get better from my back injury and will I actually be able to do anything. So when I left school, they gave me two options at school, uh, at college, which was catering or barbering, and I chose catering, not necessarily because that's what I massively wanted to do, but I wanted to do it more than I wanted to cut hair. Yeah. Um, and I went on and I went to college and I enjoyed that and I was around a lot of people who wanted to do that. Um, actually, Steve from Linden Accounts, who's um, funded our, our dad craft sessions. Have you done for a while? Hashtag Linden Accounts. He was on the course with me as well. We went to school together, but we were on the same course at college. Then we went on to, to work in restaurants, but I started volunteering at the same time at youth clubs and stuff. But I didn't know I wanted to be a youth worker until I was about 23. Mm -hmm. So I'd done it for about six years before I was like, this is what I want to do. And it wasn't that I didn't feel like I was good at it or I didn't get praise for like people were like, oh, you're really good, you should go for it. It was more like I just don't, I didn't really know who I was. So I didn't yeah. know how to even think about what might fit. And I think that's something I, I talk to my kids about is that it's okay not to know. Like mm -hmm. they put a lot of pressure, especially when they're going into year nine. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's going to start being that pressure of what are you going to do in GCSEs? Then it's going to be what you're doing in college. And then it's going to be what are you going to do at uni or for a, for a job? So I kind of very much talked to her about the fact that it's okay to not know or to try different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So over on Facebook and on, uh, and on Instagram, on our social medias, we pose a question to people. Um, we're going to go through a quick break and then we will start reading out what people have given us with the question of how important is it for you as a parent for your child to have a university degree? We're back in just a bit. Yo, it's Jace from Darkcast with the man them. Just doing a quick ad just to kind of show some of the new stuff we have added to the store. For those that uh, want to support the movement and want to help us, obviously we need money in order to run projects. So I have released three new designs. We've got Child Free Zone, you know, just to let the kids know when you need your adult time, need some time away to decompress. Then we've got how far we're ahead as you can see these are all inspired by uk road signs uh, you can get them in hoodies t-shirts vests and the like and last but not least living in a zoo because sometimes you're unsure if you're living with children or living with wild animals if you want to buy some of this merch you want to know where to find it go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash dadcast wtmd make sure you're repping the finest in dadcast wares and support the project going forward Peace. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to discuss our burning question that we, we put out onto all of our social media, um, which kind of pertains to education. And what was that question, Joe? The question for parents was, or for anyone, was how important is it to you that your child gets a degree from university? So that was the question. We put it up on our Insta and our Facebook and yeah, we got some good answers. So we're going to run through some of them now. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, so Rhea. Uh, said on Facebook, it's not important for me that uh, they have to have a degree. If it's important to them, then I'll actually encourage it. If it's not, then I'll support that too. Yeah, and I think it's sort of like what we've been saying, that we want our kids to do well, mm -hmm. but we're, we're letting them choose the path. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. And then um, our good friend Sean McGorgeous uh, on Instagram said, it's important to me because I believe the, uh, I believe um, I value education and believe a degree allows for greater opportunities. I think most parents would agree that they want their children to do far greater than they did. And for me, a degree is a version of that. I am a university educated and um, that has awarded us with some benefits as a family. Now I pass the baton on to my child. 
I think that's really interesting as well, and I think everybody's personal experience is going to shape how, how they feel about it. But absolutely, you always want your children to achieve more. We've spoken about that quite a lot. We want our children to surpass us. Mm -hmm. And if, in education, if that is a way of opening doors, then that's definitely... And it gives, it does thing, with the doors, it gives options, doesn't it? That's, mm -hmm. like, having a degree means that you have options that you might not have. Yeah. Sometimes people get a degree and may not use that degree. Yeah. But again, having a degree does mean that you have... The, the interesting question about that, which we won't dive into now, is the cost of a degree nowadays versus yeah. those options. I think that's a, a, another conversation maybe we can have afterwards, but yeah, the, there's, there's, it's changed over the last five, ten years, yeah. you know? So yeah, anyway. Um, so Adam on Facebook said, I will leave it down to his choice. If he wants to get to uni, then he can. If not, then it's not a problem. You can build a career without one, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is very true. I know a number of people who didn't go to university um, and have built a very, very um, successful career in, yeah. you know, in, in different areas and different um, um, sectors. So. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bristol Cloven Pushers, um, who you guys should go and follow uh, on Instagram, uh, have put unimportant, so yeah. for them it's not not important, um, and I'll do another one because that was quite short. Um, Miss Superwoman Baby, big up Danielle. To me it's more important that they um, educate, get a career and own their own property. University is not important, not paying someone else's mortgage for the rest of their life is. So for her, whether university is the tool or not, getting educated enough to get a job. Yeah, bricks and mortar. Bricks and mortar, which I can, I think I can relate to. Yeah, I think you know, nowadays it's it's hard, and it will yeah. be well be harder for our kids. Yeah, it might be easier. Yeah. I think. Optimistic <laughs> about that one. Uh, we have Aisha on Facebook says, "I just want my child to be happy." And the thing that's this quite important with that as well to, to point out is that. Uh, Shauna and Aisha both do cultural educating. Go mm -hmm. find them on Instagram as well because yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. like you know talking about representation matters and trying to change the game in how education looks um, from a diverse standpoint and how it is delivered and, and so on. And I think that you know she seemed to give a TED talk as well, and it's still really great to see that just because you get an education doesn't mean that everybody wants their child to actually have yeah. that same level. Um, and yeah, although Shauna says that. Uh, she she wants her, her children to go and get a degree. At the same time, there is going to be a happiness element to it as well. Of course, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, um, I'll read another one. We have um, Katie. Uh, she says, it's important to me that they have the opportunity to go to uni uh, for the education, obviously, but also for their life experience. Uh, but, but if they didn't want to go, seeking a different type of experience, I'd be happy with that too. Uh, for me, it's all about having all the opportunities available to them, so the world really is their oyster. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. Um, Acer, um, Acer, one. Acer One UK, uh, Luke, I believe, is that right? Yeah. Uh, said, the question I'd ask is why do you need to go to university? Gone are the days when a degree means anything much in the real world. It certainly doesn't guarantee a higher wage. The spiralling cost makes the very idea of going to uni well out of reach to many of us guys. I don't know many Bristolians who were born with a silver spoon. So before my kids even begin to think about taking that route, I need them to be totally sold that it was what they genuinely wanted to do and for 100% the right reasons. I'd back them all the way if they fought it through and know what they're dealing with, but if not, there are so many other routes to happiness and success in work and employment that I'd certainly be looking for a less financially crippling way to get ahead. Which, again, I think, you know, 10 years ago, that wouldn't probably have even been a thought in parents' heads. Yeah. But yeah. the fact that it's now, what, 27,000 for tuition fees across three years, rather than added pressure. plus the loans on top. Yeah. Like, so, and I think that's a really good, I think that, like we, we said, I think that is a really good point. It's a lot of money to invest. It's about. They're trying to highlight that. I know it's, you know, it's it's fiction, but obviously they're trying to um, highlight that on extenders at the moment. Okay. Um, okay. You know, trying to bring in common, you know, common issues um, and relate it to today's society. So that's definitely something that they're really focusing on at the moment uh, with one of their young characters. Okay. I, I, like, I don't watch EastEnders, but I like it when it represents real life. <laughs> it's definitely starting to do that a lot more. <laughs> um, okay, so Martin on Facebook says, um, I can encourage education above a lot of things, but can't really get behind encouraging my daughter to get into massive debt. Yeah. Okay. And that's the thing, when you, I don't know uh, many Americans on, on that level, but you always see on the TV they talk about having a college fund, fund. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's not really college. something that you hear of um, in the UK. And I'm sure there are people that do it. That's the thing, I'm sure there are people that do already do it. Um, but yeah, that is interesting, that cultural difference. Because, yeah, you don't want your child to be in debt, 
but at the same time, the, the loans people that have ended up with student loans and you don't pay until you get a job that pays a certain amount. And that's how things are at the moment, you know. Yeah. With the, we will get political, we always kind of dabble on the line, but you never know where things are going to end up with yeah. regards to yeah. student loans. Then I suppose in America as well, they have, um, you know, people, I suppose, who are in our kind of class, you know, working class, they have the opportunity to get scholarships to go. And they do, but they're not as widely available as, like, most people who've got the right qualification can mm. apply for a... Uh, a student loan, mm. but as far as I'm aware, scholarships aren't as open as that. I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I like as well that like you've got people like Storms, like obviously, young person has to do the work yeah. and get the um, acceptance. But then you know they have the like the murky fund or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. and that will pay for two young people mm. to, to yeah. go to Cambridge, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is, was it Cambridge or Oxford? Maybe Oxford. Which I thought was the one. Yeah. There was one, <laughs> one that was for it. And no, yeah. the only reason I'm saying is because one of the universities, the one it happened with, was the university that was all for it. The other one that he approached said no. No. So mm -hmm. it's, I think, you know, might be worth giving a shout out to the correct university. We'll, we'll find it. Uh, Jay on Facebook says, uh, depends on what they want to do. Would be happy for my child to do an apprenticeship or work their way up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we know plenty of people that, you know, done, appren done apprenticeships. Uh, we have Robert. Uh, he says, doing an art degree was great for me personally, but hasn't really helped me with any sort of career. Um, I'd encourage my kids to do what they think is best for them, but that a degree, an apprenticeship, or straight into work. Yeah, so it's up to them kind of yeah. what they want to want to go into. Uh, we also have Sue. Do you want to read Sue's? So, yeah, so Sue said, personally, I would support my kids in whatever they want to do, just like, much, like most of us said. Uh, neither of my older kids went to uni and both have really good jobs. My son has an amazing career that he has worked his way up the company for an apprenticeship. I think it's important to support and encourage your kids in whatever they decide to do. Which is, yeah, that's, that's, this is what I love as well, is that although people have different angles and aspects to it, we all have the same goal. We want yeah, happy, well-rounded yeah, children. Yeah, yeah. And to not have to stress about, because yeah. I think that's one of the things financially, it's about, I don't want my kids to stress the way sometimes I have in life about bills and this and that. Obviously they're going to, but I want them to be able to find their way out of that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, we had Matt said, a degree I think is only good for certain careers, i.e. medical profession, law, maybe engineering, but seems an apprenticeship is the better way to go. And I understand what he's saying because obviously you have a more hands-on practical yeah. know, way of learning. Yeah. And the thing is as well, is going through that, I didn't do an apprenticeship, but I did work um, straight from... Like, you know, went from secondary to college and into work. Mm. And then it's through my work, I then got the opportunity through work to do a degree. Yeah. So then they ended up paying for me to do that degree. Mm. And I think sometimes, yeah, when you have those routes, like the um, going for apprenticeships or getting into a place to work after college, mm. there is opportunity. And I think that's an important thing as well. So if any young person should happen to be watching this, remember this in that, yes, it's great if you go and do it and get it out of the way and get it banked. But I did not do my degree until I was 26, I think I was. So you don't need to do it straight away. You can, when I was on my course, um, there were, I was the only gentleman on the course. Uh, all the rest were ladies. But it's that thing where they were ranging from 18 to mid 50s, I think it was. Um, so it's one of those things where actually you don't, you don't necessarily need to go to uni in order to like straight away you can find yourself yeah. find what it is you want to do and then go back i think sometimes when people label gap years yeah it has like pressure the time to go back it, the and i think and that's a cultural thing there's two things i wanted to kind of touch on and one of them was about um the fact that um there are actual uh people within uh sectors that will say we rather you didn't have a degree not just the media thing you were saying but like for example if you look at something like a um uh, events management you don't need a degree you're better off going in and learning the ropes from the ground up and seeing how the business is run you learn more there than you would in a degree and it's just one example that i remember i spoke to someone about who ran their own business mm -hmm. and they said actually someone with a degree but no experience isn't that valuable to us but someone yeah. with experience and no degree is um so i think that's something that it's about doing that research whether that's as a parent supporting your, your child or you know, your, your young young person into kind of doing that. And I can't remember what the other thing I wanted to touch on was, but I'm sure we'll get back to it. But we did have one more comment, which was um, Stacey, who said, uh, not really that important to be fair. I do know quite a lot of people who get their degree and end up not even doing what that degree was for, and in a lot of debt. Yeah. So, and again, I think that's something that's come up a few times. I think I agree in regards to the fact that I know a lot of people who've done something and not gone on to do it, uh, that stay in that sector but i do think there is a massive learning that you do at uni especially if you go off and you do it mm. do you know what i mean um well that's the one thing i wanted to kind of touch on quickly before we go is about culture 
um, because it's something I noticed uh, when I worked in a school where there was a big mixture of middle class and working class kids and I noticed that the kids who were hitting GCSE age who were from the more middle class backgrounds just expected to go to uni. It was part of what they were going to do. Their parents yeah. went, their older siblings went, they're going to go. And the kids from the younger, uh, from the working class backgrounds, it wasn't part of their kind of thought process. And I remember me growing up, single parent, family, working class background. No one in my family had been to uni. I didn't think about going to uni, even with missing GCSEs. And I think it's it takes quite a lot to break out of what your culture is. So for the middle class kids not going to uni, could have been a bigger issue for their parents, whereas for working class kids, and I am putting people in boxes here, but you know what I mean, having that opportunity where no one else has done it before can be quite mm -hmm. daunting as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important for parents to be aware of how your culture and your upbringing will affect the way your child thinks subconsciously as well. Yeah. It's something we don't often okay. contemplate. So, yeah, so thank you to everybody that did get in touch and shared their opinions and their views. Really yes. do appreciate them and would love, yeah, if you have anything more to say on it, just comment below this video and then let us know because, yeah, we're always kind of interested in seeing where other people are coming from. Um, mm. which, um, yeah. And remember you can, where you can find us because you can follow us on Insta. We do put things up like this, Dadcast WTMD, on Facebook, Dadcast with the man name and on Twitter as well. Like, you can find us on all these platforms and we love it when you engage. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> get commenting. Yeah, uh, so... There was a, a brief little bit that said about it, uh, but but another reminder that we now have a Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, you've been taking kind okay, of a yeah, lead yeah, on that. Yeah. So just a quick roundup: Why should people sign up to our Patreon? So Patreon is just a way of you guys showing support. Um, if you feel like you want to, um, all of the money that's raised goes back into Dadcast. It all goes into putting, getting new equipment, putting on new events, and things like that. And it's just a real small way that supporters can help us and get something back. So if you have a little look, there's different tiers of support and with each thing you get different things. So check it out, um, patreon.com slash dadcast uh, WTMD. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to see what we've got going on there. Okay, yeah. Uh, we still have our uh, monthly session. So the first Saturday every month, uh, Dadcast with the man then, which what will be really cool is if in five years we look back on this to see if Dadcraft with the man them is still a thing, if yeah. it's yeah. like if it's in more places, yeah. if it's in yeah, so that's really good. So yeah, thank you to uh, the children's crap store and to uh, London Accounts. accounts. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say accounts, is it accounting? It's, like, it's accounts. Been a while since I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's just that thing where yeah, thank you to those that, that have been um, supporting and, and, and helping us out. It's been it's quite mad. Um, Nicola pointed out that next month Marks a year since you joined us officially. Yeah, 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 yeah which is crazy. So, yeah, yeah, that's kind of gone. It's blown by quite man. Quick. Um, Jeez, yeah, so thank you to everybody that has has supported. I'm just thinking, Kenny, is there anything else that we need to kind of let people know? Um, we recently did a video on our Facebook. Um, if we have figured out how to rip it, we will put it in the YouTube archives as well. But soon we're going to be looking at, uh, we were testing some, some sweet chili sauces. Of, of varying degrees of temperature, but we will have a few more fun videos coming up. Uh, maybe us testing out some of the more extreme varieties of sources. But yeah, we're trying to think of things that we can do so that it is good to kind of talk dads. But we're we're doing work on the radio where we're talking dads, and you know, not that we'll run out of things to say. I just feel like we need to kind of show you guys another side as well. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, just yeah, dads really feeling dads, yeah, we're yeah. human beings as well. At the end of the day, yeah, on fun side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you for sticking with us. Make sure you do like the video. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you tell other people to do the same. Um, yeah, thank you so much everybody that's been here, sticking with us. I think recently, those that have me personally on Facebook and um, Instagram will see that recently I've kind of been reflective mm -hmm. on, on the support that's out there. Yeah. If anybody wants any kind of support from us, do yes. get in touch. Um, see you us in the man now. Yeah. Whether that's, personally you just want to talk to somebody, if you want to kind of look, if you have an idea and you want to find a way to get out and you have no idea, do you know, we do not have a massive reach of millions of people but we've got a few hundred, one of those might know the millions yeah. that can help you out. So yeah, just, get, just give us a shout. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Kenny, I'll let you wrap us up. I feel like it's so long since we've done this. I know, I know. <laughs> so guys, don't forget that fatherhood doesn't come with a manual. Please. Please. Oh.